Hey guys, it's Pamela. Happy times. <laughs> okay. Um, I've had a little debacle since video three or two and three on getting the paint to flow underneath the bloom. So that's what I'm going to try to address today. I haven't had a lot of time experimenting with it. I've been back and forth to the paint store a couple of times because I'm just hell-bent on using, that's the first product we're going to look at right there. I was just hell-bent on using the base coat recipe that I listed in video three because I wanted it to be tentable, and it's a tentable fence and deck paint. But it's just too thick, so <laughs> a little birdie came into the comment section on my channel and said, why don't you use a house paint? So this is color place. It's from Walmart. It's the satin. I also, I'm going to, uh, play with a gloss in the same paint, put them side by side here so that we can, because I wanted to know if there was a difference and there really wasn't much difference. I think I like the gloss more. <clears throat> so I'm torching that right now. Now this is going to be called on my channel, the flood coat. I got to get my terminology right here so I don't confuse anyone. This is the flood. And if you put a little extra underneath your colors, they help them to slide around a little bit. So these are all, I stuck with all the same paint, which you should. Consistency is really key with this, and technique is most of it, not so much the ingredients. But I like to beat my head against the wall with ingredients, so if you haven't noticed that. Um, there's the topper. That stayed. That recipe stayed the same. I think I'm using Lucas Krill there, but it's like one part paint, two part Floetrol. Um, with this paint, this house paint, I added some of the base recipe about a three to one ratio, three part paint, one part of the base recipe so that it would flow or be closer to the consistency of the colors because they have the base paint in them also. So I hope that makes sense. I'll try to adjust the recipe that you can print out in the description. With each video, I'm going to put that recipe down there. So, and this isn't real time right here. I sped this up as the bloom. It took a couple of minutes. Okay, now it's real time where I'm tilting. So in each video, I'm going to relist that ingredient list. And it, if I come across, you know, a new product or something's changed. So you may want to just go to the newest video if you want a list to maybe print off or refer to. That's what I did. I printed off, printed it off so that I could be sure I'm on the same track with each video from here on out. Okay, so that's the satin paint mixed with some base and, oh, and mixed with water. Did I say that? No, I didn't. And mixed with water. And I'm not going to give you a water ratio because if you pour paint, then you know if you put too much water, then you'll have cracking and crazing. Hopefully with the GAC that's in the base, it'll prevent some of that or all of it. So it's still in its infancy and I can't tell you for sure because these pieces are still drying. I'll show them on my next video. So that's the satin mixed with base and water. I think I may have used, I'll, I'll tell you about 10% water. Um, that's the semi-gloss, same thing, but in the semi-gloss. And these are quartz. They were about Oh, I think $16. I thought they would be a lot cheaper than like Home Depot or Lowe's, but they really weren't. Excuse me, I got a cat fight getting ready to happen. Hey. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. So 
Where were we? Oh, the price. If you're already at Home Depot and Lowe's, you know, every little bit helps, but I didn't find that the price was that much less at Walmart. Um, but I'm in Walmart all the time for groceries and whatnot, so I'll just get my, my flood coat there. Okay, so this is the semi-gloss. Oh, and that's a fat straw. It's a wider straw than a regular straw. And with straws, you have condensation buildup, and then it ends up in your painting. So that's why I'm switching them out. Ugh. So it's better just to blow, but I felt like using this straw today. And this red mat, I happened to see at Walmart when I was buying the paint. It's in the um, houseware section are where the pots and pans are and whatnot. The packaging had a picture of onion rings sitting on top, baking in the oven. So it's for like frying things and whatnot and keeping them out of the grease. So I thought, hmm, let me try that. It's like a 16 by 12 and it was only six or $7. And so that's real time where I'm moving the bloom around. So to me, the semi-gloss seemed to work better. So for practicing the bloom technique, I think I'll just use the semi-gloss from here on out. Okay. That's the semi-gloss. I said it three times. Okay. Next. Semi-gloss on the left and satin on the right. See? I mean, in person, I just think the semi-gloss did better with the cells. Or it could have just been the way I blew it out. So, just got to practice and see what works for you. Okay, next we're going to talk about a tintable base that I purchased from Sherwin-Williams. It is tintable just like in the regular base recipe where we used the fence and patio paint, only it's a interior I think interior, exterior, I'll have to look at the bottle again here in a minute. Okay, it's just an interior acrylic latex semi-gloss, but it's ultra deep base, so it's tintable. Not as thick as a fence paint or a deck paint. It's thinner. And um, I picked this up from, oh, and I tinted it with this golden I believe this is the one I tinted it with, but you can tint it with a golden acrylic or maybe even ink. I haven't tried ink yet. Okay, yes, I did tint this one. Okay. And again, I added some base to this, about three to one, three parts of this with the regular base and then some water. None of this really matters if your paint and everything isn't the same consistency, guys. So. Oh, I was going to say at Sherwin-Williams, they were having a 40% off sale and they do that ever so often. I don't know how often, maybe every two months. I don't normally go in there. I've only been in there twice. So this can with the 40% off, I think was $20. Don't quote me on that, but it's good paint. And it seemed to have less titanium in it. It was more of a deep base that you could tint. So And as I said, it's thinner 
and I probably put too much water in this, so that's why you'll have to play with it, guys. And write down what you do, because if you don't, you're just running around in circles. Oh, the glare. Sorry about that. So, I really like this one too. Can't really make up my mind. I'm stuck with it now, so I'm going to use it. But I like this semi gloss and the regular house paint from Walmart also. Okay, so that's what I originally envisioned was tinting the flood coat. So that you have a background besides white. Now if you're crowding all your blooms together and just filling up the entire canvas with blooms then you know you can have a white background but I think it's kind of boring. And with this little bitty 4x4 tile it's hard to stretch that bloom across the entire thing. Well I didn't have enough paint to, to really Depending on how big your puddle is, that's that's a factor too. Okay, there's another shot of the semi-gloss in the house paint. Thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe. And again, I'll put uh, the rewording, the flood coat, down in the uh, comments so that we can keep people from getting confused, especially me. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.